All right, so in case that example was a little bit too complicated, uh, especially since you may or may not know uh, the, the content um, that I'm talking about, I thought I would do the same thing with another example. Uh, and this is a student example. Um, this is a draft, uh, part of a draft, just one paragraph in a draft that has, that has really gone through a lot of revision already. Um, the author knows what she's doing, uh, where she's been, where she's going. And she's done that. Um, right now, what uh, we need to do is use the paramedic method to ensure that the prose is doing what it wants to do in the best way possible. Okay, so let's use the paramedic method. The first thing we're gonna do is look for verbs to be and prepositions, okay? So verb to be, and I apologize if this bit takes a little bit of time. Um, school friend of, preposition uh, and sort of bath okay preposition uh, frowns upon preposition visits to oops not green I want that to be yellow um, due to her lower class status and current financial difficulties that have found her in meager residence okay um, Lady Russell is supportive, so here we have another verb to be, of the friendship preposition, takes and to, let's see, to the Westgate buildings in her carriage. While visiting her friends, Anne learns that Mr. Elliot was acquainted with Mr. Smith, and he was... I misspell that. Oops, yeah. Um, and he was partially. Okay, so we've got was and was. Both of those are verbs to be. Okay, uh, for preposition or as a woman. This, oops, sorry about that, you guys. Um, Preposition, verb to be, enable to, claim rights to, property she inherited from. Oh, her late husband, Mr. Elliot, has failed to assist her. Okay. Um, some of these prepositions are actually parts of verbs, right? Um, so, you know, you can take that with a grain of salt. Uh, in the end, and technically while is also, uh, somebody's texting me. In the end, Captain Wentworth helps Miss Smith by, okay, by to her affairs. It's very insistent. Um, <laughs> Miss Smith is, Okay, a cripple, and she moved to Bath for the soothing healing effects of the hot baths. Um, if you've never been to Bath, you should go. Uh, it's a fantastic place. Um, is, it's verb to be, here for by, preposition, nurse by profession, a storyteller by avocation. I'm not going to look at verb, at sentence, sorry, at, at the language that's inside a quote, okay, because I assume that that's a separate thing. Um, and you, you may or may not want to change that, right? Um, but uh, in this case, it's a very brief quote. I don't think we need to, to do anything about that. Um, and I like the way that this is phrased, storyteller by avocation. Um, so we'll leave that and just kind of ignore its use of um, prepositions. Uh, Nurse Brooke has taught Miss Smith to knit so that she may earn a small income and she entertains Miss Smith with the current gossip. She has learned while employed in other homes. Okay. All right, so um, so at a first look, th this doesn't look too bad, okay? Um, I do see quite I do see more verbs to be than um, you know, then we're in the last example I showed you, uh, but this isn't too too bad. Okay, there are still a lot of uh, prepositions, um, so let's see what we can do with this. Okay, let's take the this sentence by sentence. Okay, this this is definitely not easy stuff, right? Miss <laughs> um, Smith is a poor widow and a school friend of Anne's who lives in Bath. Okay, 
Anne's family frowns upon her visits to Mrs. Smith due to her lower class status and current financial difficulties that have found her in meager residence. Okay, all right, so these two sentences, I wonder if we could combine them actually um, and eliminate, use, use it to eliminate that verb to be, but it's a poor widow, oh, where's the action? Uh, yeah, it's a poor widow and a school friend who lives. Okay, so lives. Um, Miss Smith is a poor, okay. All right, so the simplest thing we could do here is add a comma, and I'm gonna show you, I'm just gonna do this directly on here, okay? Um, Miss Smith, comma, a poor widow and school friend of Anne's lives in Bath, but Anne's family frowns upon her visits to Miss Smith due to her lower class status and current financial difficulties that have found her in meager residence. Okay, one of the things I noticed with this use of prepositions is that this adds a little bit of redundancy, okay? Due to her lower class status and current financial difficulties and in meager residence, okay? Um, so I know that, that they don't mean exactly the same thing, okay? Uh, meager residence refers mostly to, uh, you know, the, the, the quality of her house, okay, and uh, the way she keeps house. Um, but we might be able to do something with that, okay, to kind of simplify it. Lives in Bath. Um, but Anne's family um, frowns upon, who is this her? Is it Anne, Anne's family, or Mrs. Smith? Anne's family frowns upon, Anne's family does not want her to visit Mrs. Smith. Does, we could say frowns upon, we could simply say their visits um, due to her, due to, because of what? Um, because Mrs. Smith is of lower class, and lives in meager residence and lives meagerly, okay? Um, all right, so what's happened now is that we've combined those two sentences to get rid of the verb to be uh, and focus on that action, lives in Bath, but Anne's family frowns upon their visits because Mrs. Smith is of lower class and lives meagerly. Okay, good, it's much more straightforward, okay? Let's see about the second sentence. Uh, Lady Russell is supportive of the friendship and takes Anne to the Westgate buildings in her carriage. Okay, so this is a contrast, isn't it? Um, among her family, only Lady Russell supports, okay? That's the key difference, right? Lady Russell supports the friendship, okay? Among her family, only later Lady Russell supports the friendship. Um, takes Anne to the Westgate buildings where Mrs. Smith lives. Um, her to Westgate buildings in her carriage. Okay, so we can leave that. Um, we could say something like, uh, you know, Lady Russell supports the friendship and arranges their uh, meeting. Okay. While visiting a friend, Anne learns that Mr. Elliot was acquainted with Mr. Smith and he was partially responsible for his lost fortune. Okay. Okay. Uh, partially responsible for his lost fortune. Okay. So we have some clarity issues. He was partially responsible for his lost fortune. Um, I'm assuming, right, that we are talking about Mr. Elliot and Mr. Smith, and it's Mr. Elliot was partially responsible for Mr. Smith's loss of fortune, okay? Uh, yeah, so we need to correct the um, confusion with the he and the his, okay? We need to make sure that that is really clear. Um, it's definitely something we need to do while we're working on this sentence, okay? All right, so while visiting her friend, Anne learns that Mr. Elliot was acquainted with Mr. Smith and he was partially responsible for his lost fortune. Okay, where is it Mr. Elliot knew Mr. Smith? 
do we need this actually? Do we even need this? Um, I'm not sure we do, right? Learns that Mr. Elliot was partially responsible for um, Mr. Smith's lost fortune. Okay, so we ready and learns that Mr. Elliot was partly responsible for Mr. Smith's lost fortune. Okay, so now we've gotten rid of one verb to be, um, and we've clarified the he and his uh, issue, the ambiguous reference, ambiguous pronoun reference. Um, what we can now do is work on this, um, was partially responsible for Mr. Smith's lost fortune. Well, responsible for is the kind of action, being responsible for. But we can say that a little bit more pithily by saying cause, right? Learns that Mr. Elliot partly caused Mr. Smith's loss of fortune, okay? Um, all right, so now we've gotten rid of all, so far, all of the verbs to be, except for this one up here, but um, um, but I think we can probably keep that. Let's, let, we'll put it back and we'll see if we can, if we can put the highlighting back and we'll see if we can get rid of it later. As a woman, Mrs. Smith is unable to claim rights to property she inherited from her late husband, uh, and Mr. Elliot has failed to assist her. Okay, um, okay so th actually there are a couple things that I would probably want to clarify about this, right, before we move on to some more work with the paramedic method. Um, Anne learns only at this point in the story, right, about the history of Mr. Elliot and the Smiths because uh, after Mrs. Smith learns that Anne and Mr. Elliot are not going to be married, she um, she explains what what has happened. Um, so we could we could add a bit that will kind of clarify that relationship uh, just to be sure just to be sure we're saying exactly what we need to say. Um, another place that we might want to take a look is this sentence. Um, As a woman, Mrs. Smith is unable to claim her rights to the property she inherited from her late husband. Mr. Elliot has failed to assist her. So, so she can't claim these property rights on her own without legal help because she doesn't have any money, okay? Um, so, uh, so she needs to get an attorney to help her file claims, but because she's poor, she, she can't get an attorney and Mr. Elliot is not helping her, okay? Um, so we might want to clarify some of that content as we're, we're doing this, okay? So it's not just because she's a woman, it's because she's a poor woman, okay? Um, a poor woman, okay? Um, or we could say a woman in poverty. A woman in poverty. Um, Mrs. Smith is unable to... She needs to claim property rights or property she inherited from her late husband. And Mr. Elliot has failed to assist her. Okay, so now we've clarified that. Um, is unable to hire. Okay, can, una, is unable to hire. Um, what about this? Cannot. Cannot hire the attorney she needs to claim property she inherited from her late husband. And Mr. Elliot, despite promises, has failed to assist her. Um, okay, good. Uh, this is not a preposition. Okay. In the end, Captain Wentworth helps Mrs. Smith by attending to her affairs. Okay. In the end, Captain Wentworth helps Mrs. Smith uh, by attending to her affairs. Mrs. Smith is a cripple and she moved to Bath for the soothing healing effects of the hot baths. She is cared for by Nurse Brooks. Is, um, okay, we can again rearrange the sentence structure. It would probably be a better way to, to sort of do this um, by just saying a cripple who moved to Bath for It's healing waters. Mrs. Smith is cared for. Okay, 
So, so we got rid of a few more prepositions here. Uh, Cripple moved to Bath for its healing waters. Uh, Mrs. Smith is cared for by Nurse Rook. Nurse by profession. This is an instructor who knit so that she may earn a small income and she entertains Mrs. Smith with current gossip she's learned while employed in other homes. Okay. Um, okay. All right. So in this sentence, uh, the action is cared, right? Um, cared for, right? Uh, Nurse Rook cares for Mrs. Smith. Okay. Nurse Rook, a nurse by profession and a storyteller by avocation, cares for Mrs. Smith, comma, a cripple who moved to Bath for its healing waters. Okay, so partly what we're doing is in this paramedic method is identifying the action of the sentence, okay, and then rearranging the sentence to make that action uh, and the doer of that action clear. Okay, so instead of starting with references to Mrs. Smith, we want to start with references to Nurse Rook. Okay. Um, Nurse Rook, a nurse by profession and a storyteller by avocation, R-Z-E-P-K-A-109, um, cares for Mrs. Smith, who moved to bath for its healing waters. I don't really think we need the part about her being a cripple. I think it um, doesn't add anything really to the to the, the story. So um, I think we can just um, leave it a here. Okay. Nurse Rook has taught, um, Rook has taught Mrs. Smith to knit so that she may earn a small income and she entertains Mrs. Smith with the current gossip. Um, with the gossip, all gossip is current. Well, usually gossip she's learned while employed in other homes. Okay, um, so we've gotten rid of all of the verbs to be and we've shortened the paragraph by just a little bit, um, but we've made it much more uh, to the point, okay? Um, Mrs. Smith is of lower class and lives meagerly. Um, so we could say um, Mrs. Smith lives meagerly because Mrs. Smith leaves me, leaves, because we've already said poor, she's poor, so we know we know where she is, right, um, economically speaking. Um, okay, so, so that's an example of how to do it on a, a pretty well-edited already revised piece of student writing. Um, don't forget to add moments of clarification where you need them. Uh, my other question for this paragraph would be, you know, how does it fit into what's before and after? Is it just a bit of information about Mrs. Smith? Um, that we're going to build on later or, or what, okay? So um, so take this with a grain of salt, but, uh, but here's an example of how to do the paramedic method um, on another piece of writing.